I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about contrast ratio, favicons, offline web apps, and more. Let's check it out. First up is a tool called contrast ratio. Now, if you're building a website and you're wondering whether or not your text contrasts enough with the background, this is a tool that you want to use. So you're saying you shouldn't use like light gray text on a light gray background? Probably not. It's not going to be very legible. Hmm. But what if you're just trying to trick your users into squinting? That would be uh, actually pretty terrible. So here we have a background and it's set to white. That's over on the left side here. And over on the right, we have the text color and that's using an HSLA value that's set to black and it's slightly transparent. So that's the text that you see over here. Now in the middle, we have this number 8.6 and that's a rating according to the WCAG 2.0 guidelines. What does that stand for? That stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Wow. Yep. And if we go ahead and change this color, so I'm going to set the background to green here, and we'll change this color over here to orange. It's going to give me a pretty terrible rating. It's going to say this actually fails WCAG, and it gives me a sad face there. Yeah, that's, that fails a lot of things. But if I were to reset this and set the background color to white and the text color to black, we'll get a really high rating here. And it will say this passes AAA level for any size text. So it has good contrast. So pretty nifty tool and good for testing whether or not you have enough contrast with your text. Yeah, that's, that's really useful. Hmm. Especially, you know, in, in case you need to be told not to have a green background and orange text. Just in case. Right? Uh, next up, we have something called the Real Favicon Generator. Now, this is a really nice site where you can input your current website and it will tell you how your favicon looks and also give you different code to put into your site. Wow, for real? Yeah, it'll also give you different gradings to see if it works well on Android browsers or Windows, mobile phones, things like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, got a, got a little demo here. You can either submit your favicon and it'll generate the different ones for you, uh, or you can check your existing favicon. I'll just enter cnn.com right here. And, okay, so I gave it cnn.com to check the different favicon and said, hey, all right, great. Um, the overview is, yeah, it looks great on desktop. Yeah, it looks great on iOS. Yeah, looks fine on some cases in Windows 8, but uh-oh, this is not well designed for Android. So then it goes through and it kind of grades you and tells you what's going on. You know, obviously green means it's good. Red, hey, you need a little bit of work on here. And it will give you suggestions saying, hey, upload this size picture and even more suggestions for different PNG sizes. Then it also breaks down with iOS sizes as well as Windows 8. And um, boy, it doesn't have the Android on here, but it can make some optimizations for that too. Anyway. Check it out. We'll have a link to that in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes at the Treehouse Show. That is wonderful. Well, next up is Ion Icons. And if you like icon fonts, you're going to love this because... I love icon fonts. It's an icon font. It says the premium icon font for Ionic Framework. Now, what the heck is that? Well, if you click through, it's actually a framework that's coming soon in fall 2013. Ooh, not much time left. Uh -oh. And it's going to be the bond between HTML5 and native apps. And you can go ahead and sign up with your email address to get notified. However, these icons are already available. And as Andrew Chalkley said, this is the fam 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 of our time. Fam fam fam, of course, being a popular icon set of yesteryear. But these are the new ones, and they're super flat. And as, if we scroll down here, you can see that a lot of these look very much like icons like you might find in iOS 7. So, of course, if this is going to be the bond between HTML5 and native apps, you definitely need to use some of those. If we scroll down further, you can see all the typical things that you would expect. And we've got some play buttons here, some social icons, all that good stuff. It's a pretty 
good icon font. It seems like it's pretty comprehensive, so definitely be sure to check it out. Uh, I guess you should say you could keep your eye on it. That's a good one, Jason. Get it? Because it's, it's yeah, called Ionicon. I, I think we got it. Uh, next up, we have a really handy uh, table here for equality in JavaScript with zeros. So if you're ever laying in bed one night and you're like, man, I, I really can't figure out if null is equal to zero in JavaScript, you can just go right to this website yeah. and figure it out. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't send this to you yesterday. Yeah. It's weird because he was telling me about how he couldn't go to sleep because he couldn't Think about equality of so, zeros in so tired today. JavaScript. Anyway, no, so this is, a, this is a nice site where, surprisingly, JavaScript equality can be a little bit strange. Um, like, if we take a look at the site, they have the number zero, and is that equal to zero? Well, yes, this chart says it's true. Uh, it is also equal to the string zero, the array with the only element zero, an empty array, but not an object literal. So if you are confused about why some value in JavaScript is maybe returning something strange, you might have run into one of these different scenarios, and you should look it up on here just to see what's going on. Now, it's not just equality. They also have it for uh, triple equal sign, which is uh, quality and the same object. And uh, it also works for addition and multiplication. So anyway, this is a really, really handy chart next time you're programming a uh, web app in JavaScript, refer to it in case you're getting some strange behavior that you can't figure out. You might have hit one of these weird little edge cases. Hmm, that's a really handy reference. Or you can just read it for fun after you're done with uh, the phone book or the dictionary. Yeah, huh? if you have enough time. Hmm, really nice stuff. All right, well, next up is... We're really nailing the jokes today. <laughs> next up is a blog post from Ethan Marcotte. I still don't know how to pronounce his last name. If it's Marcotte or Marcotte, I'm really sorry. Uh, but anyway, it's a blog post from Ethan. I'll leave it at that. And Ethan, of course, is the creator of responsive web design, which is a technique that allows you to create web pages that work on a variety of different screen resolutions. Now, that's actually what the blog post is about. There's been a little bit of controversy in the web design world recently. Uh, Luke, another difficult last name, Rob Bluski, I believe is how you say it, wrote a blog post, and he's basically saying that he thinks people have become too dependent on screen sizes or the, the width of the screen for uh, determining other functionality, such as touch capabilities. Ethan says, you know, of course you shouldn't determine other functionality based on the screen resolution. And he makes a point here where he says, you know, rather than seeing that as a hindrance, he sees the screen resolution as being a foundation for building up other things. So instead of seeing it as, you know, kind of a drawback, he really sees it as a way to actually start your design. You know, you start your design with the screen, and then as other things become available to us uh, later on with new standards that are upcoming, um, I think there's trying to think of the name of it. It's a W3C standard, and he did link to it in here. It's the Net Info API. So as other things like that become available and new capabilities become available on hardware devices, it might be okay to do that later on. But I think he's very right in stating that we really should stick to responsive web design as being a tool for designing for a screen, because that's really the, the common thread amongst all of these different devices. Yeah, and you know, when you get to the point where you need to add different behavior and things like that, you can use a polyfill. You know, if you don't want to rely on touch, use a polyfill that we've talked about on previous episodes of the show where it'll say, hey, if touch is available, use that. If not, go ahead and fall back to the click handlers or something like that. Exactly. He's saying that a small screen doesn't necessarily mean it's a touch device. Yeah, maybe someone just resized their browser. Exactly. I mean, I, sometimes I browse the web with my browser that big. It's just, it's not yeah. a statement. It's just sometimes that's. Yeah, instead of Solve using the... browser tabs, that's usually what I do. I just have like eight really skinny browsers across, yeah. across the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love browsing the web that way. <sighs> <laughs> Next up, we, uh, we have a project called Offline. This is a JavaScript library from HubSpot that makes handling offline interactions with your web apps much easier. 
Now, one thing that's interesting about you know where we are today, you can have a web app that handles a, a whole bunch of data. You know, you're posting to a server, getting things back right on the page without leaving it. You know, maybe it's heavy into AJAX, maybe it's using WebSockets, something like that. Now, what this library does is it'll mo it'll um, monitor the connectivity of your application. If it goes offline, it can display a message to somebody, and you can decide how you ha want to handle it at that point. Now, as you expect from basically everything that we cover on here, it is very, very simple to use. You can see if the, if the connection is available immediately. You can intercept requests, specify how long of a delay you want. Um, and then you can say, hey, what should we do when we are online? What happens when we're reconnecting? What happens when we're reconnected? And you can also intercept AJAX requests if you want to. Anyway, this is a really, really handy library and something that you should be using in your web applications. You can't always assume that people are going to be connected this day and age. Uh, so yeah, just check that out, offline.js. You'll find a link to it in the show notes. You know, that reminds me that the FAA recently decided that we can go ahead and leave electronic devices on while we're in any phase of flight. Oh, good. So if, you know, the person is using your web app, maybe they're on the, they're on the runway and then as they take off, they're just like totally zoned out and it disconnects from the internet, that, uh, that might be a perfect use for it. That, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, next up is Snazzy Maps, and recently uh, Google just released the 3.0 version of their Google Maps JavaScript API, and in that you can actually apply different colors to the maps. Snazzy Maps is basically just a set of themes or different color schemes that you can apply to your maps. Now there's a lot of different colors on a map that you need to set, so this is actually pretty nice because it has all of those colors already set and adjusted for you. And as we discussed earlier, contrast on any of these is very important. So it's nice that that's already done for you. And look at that. Whoa, I can actually drag these around and wow. see what different parts of the world look like in any one of these themes. Not much to say about it, but uh, it is pretty nice that a lot of these themes are already made available to you. So definitely be sure to check that out if you're working with Google Maps. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up for today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. If you want any more information on anything we talked about, be sure to check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes at the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see videos that are even better than this <laughs> one, hard to imagine. Go anywhere else on the internet. <laughs> or if you want to learn more about web design, web development, business, mobile, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope to see you next week. I like your face. I like your face.